Hallelujah. How is everybody today? Are you blessed and highly favored? This is the day the Lord has made and we will rejoice because we have a choice. Amen. Praise God. How many know God's on the move? Ah, he's always on the move, isn't he? Nothing greater than God's presence. Lovers of his presence, those are the ones he searches out. The Father seeks those who worship him in truth and spirit. When people learn how to worship the Lord, all their life changes. Would you turn to the book of Leviticus, please? 23. There are two things that are constant. Well, of course, there's more than two things, but anyways. Two specific things that are constant in the area to where they are connected to God's presence. The first is the tabernacle of God. Everything revolves around the tabernacle. And so people understand that the tabernacle of God, when you look in the Old Testament, there was a tabernacle where God was in his presence, the cloud by day, the fire by night, and the 12 tribes of Israel were all around it because they were connected to the presence of God. Until we became the tabernacle. The tabernacle is the place where you have the outer court, the holy place, and the most holy place. It's a process of getting into God's presence. Every, ta- every chamber represents a position, an anointing, and a purpose. You have the outer courts where somebody becomes a believer. It's a place of salvation. The next chamber is called the holy place, and that's where the baptism of the Holy Spirit begins. And that's where you and I fulfill priesthood. A priest is one who worships the Lord, who ministers to Him. You can never access the third chamber until you begin to fulfill your priesthood. As you fulfill your priesthood, there's an invitation to the third chamber. And that's the glory of God. And that's where a priest becomes a warrior and carries the purpose of God. And whatever he does or she does. So there is that process. So many times people have never come out of the outer courts being Christians for 30 years and still caught in the outer court. Even after they get baptized in the Holy Spirit, they still go back to the outer court. Because they want to do their traditions instead of the presence. They're not seekers of God's presence anymore. They're seekers more of knowledge instead of God's presence when when we allow the the presence of God not to be first and knowledge to be first, we have backslidden. Is everybody okay? So the the tabernacle is essential. And that's a representation for us personally to understand what's going on and and how to proceed and, and how to break through every chamber and become a warrior of the Most High and maintain that position and not be misled. The second thing is global. It's called the seven feasts of the Lord. And the seven feasts of the Lord are associated with events that are released from the kingdom of God that only Jesus Christ can fulfill. The word says he is the beginning and the end. And the feasts were established so that we we would recognize seasons, times, events and there would be fulfillments and there are seven feasts of the Lord in Leviticus 23 and verse 1 1 through 3 would you read it with me and the Lord spoke to Moses saying speak to the children of Israel and say to them the feasts of the Lord which you shall proclaim to be holy convocations these are my feasts six days shall work be done But the seventh day is a Sabbath of the solemn rest, 
a holy convocation, you shall not work on it. It is the Sabbath of the Lord in all your dwellings. Now, I want you to understand that in the Old Testament, there was a specific day they called the Sabbath day. And it was associated with on Saturday. But when Jesus paid the price for all mankind, he became the Lord of the Sabbath. And every day for me and you is a Sabbath because the word Sabbath means rest. So it's not a specific day. So if somebody comes and tells you, said, if you don't go to church on a certain day, you're going to hell, they're an idiot. And they're deceived. Because they do not have the spirit to interpret what God is saying. Does everybody understand? See, without the spirit of the living God, you can't interpret what this word says. It's impossible. You'll have a carnal, natural, human concepts, but nothing from the spirit of God. Only the spirit of God can reveal the deep, deep things of God. Amen? Not the carnal understanding. So in this, so the Sabbath is no longer considered a feast. It's every day now. So that you and I can feast every day in the Sabbath. Does everybody understand it? Why? Because you're resting in the Lord now. You have a personal relationship. You don't wait just to go to church to try and have a relationship. Amen? Praise God. So truly the first feast of the Lord is called the Passover. And that's in verse 4. Is everybody there? These are the feasts of the Lord, holy convocations which you shall proclaim at their appointed times. On the 14th day of the first month, at twilight, is the Lord's Passover. At twilight. If you recall, only Jesus could fulfill this feast. Amen? In fact, was he not, did he not, he was crucified and died at twilight. And in that period of time, everything, but it wasn't twilight. God turned everything dark to fulfill what was spoken. Because this is prophetic. Amen? They still had a few more hours before it became twilight. But the Lord changed everything so that it would be fulfilled. So the first feast is Passover in verse 6. And the 15th day of the same month is the Feast of Unleaven. The word leaven means evil, unleavened bread. Jesus would die. He would go to hell. He would defeat evil. Amen? That's fulfilling the second, second feast. And I'm just going to share with the rest of them here quickly. And verse 5, or, or verse 7, uh, let's see, verse 6, okay. On Feast of Unleavened, verse 15. And you shall count for yourselves from the day after the Sabbath, from the day that you brought the sheaf of the wave offering seven Sabbaths, which shall be completed. Count 50 days, which we know is called Pentecost, 50 meaning Pente. So you have, you have the Feast of Passover, you have the Feast of Unleavened Bread, and you have the Feast of First root, Fruits where Jesus rose from the dead. I'm going to say it again. Passover, Unleavened, First Fruits. Does everybody get it? Then 50 days after Jesus rose from the dead, it's called Pentecost because 50 means Pente, and that's where Jesus poured out his Spirit. Amen? And that's where everybody was baptized in the Holy Spirit. Then there's the Feast of Trumpets. The Feast of Trumpets was actually represent a representation of the new year. For the Jewish, it's a new year. It's the beginning of a new year, Feast of Trumpets. We also call it the Day of Rapture when the trumpet's blown. Then there's a Feast of Atonement, which is after the Feast of Trumpets. And this is where Christ will atone the earth completely. And then there will be the Feast of Tabernacles where Christ comes and sets his kingdom up on the earth for 1,000 years. Is everybody okay? Now I want to talk about something that's vitally important because the Feast of Passover, there had to be a sacrifice. There had to be a, a sacrificial lamb. Go to Exodus 12. Again, remember, only Jesus fulfills these feasts. Now, we know the Feast of Passover, the Feast of Unleavened, the Feast of First Fruits, and the Feast of Pentecost have been fulfilled. Amen? So the next feast is the Feast of Trumpets, which it means a rapture, the removal of the church from the earth is the next event to happen. In Exodus 12. Ha! 
Haleluya. In verse 1. It's amazing how many people do not understand the feast of the Lord. If they would, they wouldn't be so freaky. When events are going on. Oh my God, we're going to lose this. The economy is going to crash. This is going to happen. This, who cares? Man, you know the feast, you're set. See, when you truly have a relationship, look at there's a difference between in the kingdom and out of the kingdom. Is there things going to be coming? You betcha. Is there chaos going to be coming? Yes. Are there collapses going to be coming? Yes. But there's also a revival coming. And there's going to be a tremendous harvest. And those inside of the kingdom will be able to witness those who are outside of the kingdom. Because they'll be running to you. What's going on? Now, so God is trying to prepare those who are in the kingdom with the understanding of these vital important events and feasts so that they know what's going on. It's amazing how many believers do not understand the feast of the Lord. It's amazing to me. Vital information. Vital. And, and Exodus 12 verse 1. Let's go there. Now the Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt saying, Thus this month shall be your beginning of months and it shall be the first month of the year to you. Speak to all the congregation of Israel, saying on, on the tenth of this month, every man shall take for himself a lamb according to the house of his father, a lamb for a household. And if the household is too small for the lamb, let him and let him and his neighbor next to his house take it according to the number of persons. According to each man's need, you shall make your count for the lamb. Your lamb shall be what? Without blemish. A male of the first year. You may, you may take it from the sheep or from the goats. Does everybody see that? Now you shall keep it until the 14th day of the same month. Then the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it at what? Twilight. And they shall take some of the blood and put it on the doorposts and on the lentil of the houses where they eat it. Then they shall eat the flesh on that night, roasted in fire with unleavened bread, and with bitter herbs they shall eat it. Do not eat it raw nor boiled at all with the water, but roasted in fire, its head with its legs and its entrails. You shall let none of it remain until morning, and what remains of it until morning you shall burn with fire. And thus you shall eat it with a belt on your waist, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand. You shall eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover. For I will pass through the land of Egypt on that night. And I will strike all the firstborn in the land of Egypt. Both man and beast. And against all the gods of Egypt. I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. So we see here the blood that was going to be sacrificed on this lamb. Had to be perfect and blemish free. Amen. And when they put it on the, on the lentils of the door, the Father acknowledged the blood. Everyone say, the Father acknowledges the blood. So when you apply the blood of Jesus, because now we are in the ministry of the Spirit. Spirit means breath. So no longer ritual, it's what you speak. Because it is a new covenant. So when you speak the blood, you apply the blood, the Father acknowledges it. Boy, I got many testimonies of applying the blood on my vehicle where the Lord has held me from uh, accidents and everything else. Hallelujah. Is everybody okay? Praise God. So we see here a lamb without blemish, a sacrificial, sacrificial lamb. Now, so the lambs, who was over the seers of all the lambs? Shepherds. Amen? So they knew, didn't they? So when, when a, a lamb was birthed and it was blameless, it was perfect, they protected that lamb. Does everybody get it? Why? Because they knew it was a sacrificial lamb. All the shepherds would prepare a lamb that was blemish free and wrap it with cloth. Wrap it tight and keep it blemish free and lay it what they call a manger, but it's really not a manger. Amen? Why? Until when? Sacrifice. Does everybody get it? 
Now, I'm going to share something with you because there really, we, the Bible calls it a manger, but there was no mangers. Okay. I mean, they didn't build mangers and put them in places. Amen. Does everybody get this? Those mangers were called water troughs. It wasn't a manger. It was made out of stone cut out. They were put in places in stalls for horses to feed out, to drink out of and animals to drink out of. Is everybody okay? This may blow some of your religiosity away, but hang tough. Go to Luke, uh, Luke chapter 2. Oh, happy days. The name of the teaching is the cloth in the manger. Luke chapter 2 is just for you. <laughs> Luke chapter 2 verse 1. We're going to go through this chapter. Everybody there, let's speak it together. And it came to pass in those days that a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all which should be registered. The whole world should be registered. The whole world. He was in charge of the whole world. This census first took place while Aquarius was governing Syria. So all went to be registered, everyone, to his own city. Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem. Now, Bethlehem means house of bread. In other words, we know that Jesus is the bread of life. Because he was of the house and lineage of David. We know that it was prophesied that a lineage, that some would come forth out of the David, the lineage of David. Amen. To be registered with Mary, his betrothed wife, who was with child. So it was that while they were there, the days were completed for her to be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes. Wrapped him in swaddling what? Cloth. Amen. And laid him in a what? Manger. Because there was no room for them in the inn. Now there were in same country shepherds living out in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were greatly afraid. Then the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be to all people. Now remember, the shepherds were in charge of bringing the perfect blemish-free lamb to be sacrificed. They were in charge that every time a, a lamb uh, was brought forth, amen, to look to make sure it was perfect and blemish-free so they could wrap it and put it in and lay it in and wait for it to be sacrificed because it was perfect. So these shepherds were out with all their sheep and their lambs, Amen. All of a sudden, the angels, come on, think about this. The angels didn't show up to men. They showed up to the shepherds. Amen? Of course, prior to that, they showed up to Mary, and then they had to show up to Joseph to convince them. Is everybody okay? And what did, what did they say? They said in verse 11, For there was born to you this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign to you. Now, here's their sign. Check this out. You will find a babe, what? Wrapped in swaddling cloths, laying in a manger. Come on. They knew it was the perfect. I mean, think about that. They, they were thinking, wait a minute. This is a human that's come to this world that is blemish-free as a lamb to be sacrificed. The shepherds freaked out. They knew that God was getting ready to do something and bring salvation to the world. Is everybody okay? Hallelujah. This was the sign. 
And suddenly there was with them the angel of multitude of the heavenly hosts, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth and peace and goodwill toward men. So it was when the angels had gone away from them into heaven that the shepherds said to one another, Let us now go to Bethlehem, the house of bread, to see this thing that has come to pass, which the Lord has made known to us. And they came with a haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger, or what we call a water trough. Now when they had seen him, they made widely known the saying which was told them concerning this child. And all those who heard it marveled at those things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all things, all these things and pondered them in her heart. Then the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen, and it was told to them. And when eight days were completed for the circumcision of the child, his name was called Jesus. The name was given by an angel before he was, con before he was conceived in a womb to Mary. When the days of her purification according to the law of Moses were completed, they brought him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it was written in the law of the Lord, every male who opens the womb shall be called holy to the Lord. And to offer a sacrifice according to what is said in the law of the Lord. A pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. Thank God we don't do that anymore. Amen. Because Jesus was a pure sacrifice. So when a child is born, you don't have to go out and kill an animal. Behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. And this man was just and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel. And the Holy Spirit was upon him. And it had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. So he came by the Spirit into the temple. And when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him according to the custom of the law, he took him in his arms and he blessed God and said, Lord, now you are letting your servant depart in peace according to your word. My eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared before all the face of all peoples, a light to bring revelation to the Gentiles and the glory of your people, Israel. And Joseph and his mother marveled of these things which they were spoken by this man. Then Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, his mother, Behold, this child is de destined for the fall and rising of many in Israel and for a sign which will be spoken against. Yes, a sword will pierce through your own soul also that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. Now there was one Anna, a prophetess, the daughter of Phanile in the tribe of Asher. She was a great age and had lived with the husband seven years from her virginity. And this woman was a widow of about 84 years who did not depart from the temple but served God with fastings and prayers night and day. And coming into that instant, she gave thanks to the Lord and spoke of him, of all those who looked for redemption in Jerusalem. So when they had performed all things according to the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee and to their own city, Nazareth. And the child grew and became strong in spirit, filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was upon him. So, again, the great sign was the wrapping Amen. All given to the shepherds. They were the witnesses. They were the first true witnesses in the area of spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ. In the area to where salvation had come. The Christ. The one that would bring power. The one that would expose evil. And the one that would make a way of escape to those who have been taken captive. Is everybody okay? All right, go to John chapter 1. Verse 29, John 1, 29. The next day John saw Jesus coming toward him and said, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. This is he whom I said, After me comes a man who is preferred before me, for he was before me. I did not know him. 
but that he should be revealed to Israel. Therefore, I came baptizing with water. And John bore witness, saying, I saw the Spirit descending from heaven like a dove, and it remained upon him. I did not know him, but he who sent me to baptize with water said to me, Upon whom you see the Spirit descending and remaining on him, this is he who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. And I have seen and testified that this is the Son of God. The babe wrapped in swaddling cloth, laying in what we call the manger, the bread of life, born in the city of Be in the Bethlehem, known as the house of bread, had come forth, known as the Lamb of God, the Lamb of God that would be sacrificed for humanity to remove darkness and bring light. Amen? Remember, Jesus was not brought forth. You know, Adam was born with dust. Amen? God breathed into dust. Jesus did not come by dust. He came by word. His body was the word of God, not the dust of creation. Go to John chapter 1, verse 14. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory. The only glory is the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Remember, grace is God's plan of escape. It's not unmerited favor. You earn God's favor. Amen? Born, John bore witness of him and cried out, saying, This was he of whom I said, He who comes after me is preferred before me, for he was before me. And all his fullness we have all received in grace for grace. For the law was given through Moses, but grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has seen God at any time. The only begotten Son, who is in the bosom of the Father, he has declared him. Now this is the testimony of John when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who are you? And of course he confessed and did not deny, but confessed, I am not the Christ. Again, we see this is so powerful because the word was conceived you know, people celebrate the birth of Jesus. Amen? But he was not born in December. Remember, everything revolves around the feasts. Amen? Now, I really truly believe, and I believe it's, he was conceived in December, but his birth was on the Feast of Trumpets, which is in September. So you count those months, it's nine months. But because the world is controlled by who? Satan's kingdom. Nimrod was born on December 25th. So the powers of darkness celebrate Nimrod's birth. Does everybody get that? So in, in that, you know, we know that there's a, a great struggle and battle in the, in, in, between the light and darkness. But truth sets us free. And by the spirit of truth, you have relationship, you'll be led to all truth. Amen? Hallelujah. Let's go to Isaiah 9. Now again, Jesus, the Word, was brought forth, birthed on the Feast of Trumpets, for the, because the next feast to follow is called Atonement. So it was bore, brought forth, birthed on the Feast of Trumpets, to bring atonement to all humanity, to bring a way of escape, give them truth, and He manifested in this realm to bring freedom. In Isaiah chapter 9, is everybody okay? Hallelujah. The cloth in the manger, well, that changed that whole story, didn't it? The sacrificial lamb became human. The child of God became human. In verse 6, and he tells us, prophesied by Isaiah, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulder, and his name will be called what? Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God. Whoa, Jesus' name was going to be called Mighty God? Yes, because he was God, incarnate. Does everybody get it? 
everlasting father. He was called everlasting father. Why? Because remember he said, if you see me, you see the father. He was called prince of peace. And of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. Upon the throne of David and over his kingdom, to order it and establish it with judgment and justice from that time forward, even forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. The Lord sent a word against Jacob, and it has fallen on Israel. And all the people who know Ephraim and the inhabitants of Samaria, who say in pride and arrogance of the heart, the bricks have fallen down, but we will rebuild with hewn stones. The sycamores are cut down, but we will replace them with cedars. Therefore the Lord shall set up the advers adver adversaries of Razan against him and spur his enemies on him. And the Syrians before and the Philistines behind. They all shall devour Israel with an open mouth. For all this his anger is not turned away, but his hand is stretched out still. So you got to remember something that God sent himself into this world to rescue and change things. You know, I always use this scenario to where, you know, if you saw, I mean, how many times have you seen an animal going into something that was going to get hurt or somebody walking in and you wanted to stop it? So if you saw a bunch of ants, right? I mean, now we would probably let them go kill themselves. But, but if you saw a bunch of ants, you know, going into a fire, you could put your hand down there and it would still go over your arm, go into the fire. The only way to communicate with an ant is become one. Amen? So God became man because they weren't hearing everything else. So he became a man and said, got in front of that fire and said, look it, fire is hell. You're going the wrong way. Follow me. Deny yourself. Deny your will. Deny what you've been doing. You've been influenced by the powers of darkness. You've been deceived. You've been blinded. Now follow me so we can get out of here. And because the whole earth is corrupted in the universe and everything else, I can shut this all down and we're going to start all over again. How about that? Okay, but there's a period of time. Because he's the beginning and the end. So we've got to go through the process of transition. You've got to come into this world. A life of corruption is impressing every single human being here. A life of self-desire, selfishness, greed, addiction. Perversion, lust of the eye, lust of the flesh, and pride of life, or self, love of self. We battle that with that every day. It's pressed on every human being because of the ruler of this earth who does this, who impresses, sends out his demonic spirits. But a child of sacrifice came to establish an eternal government. And it was given all of these names because there isn't anybody he can't be. He's God. And Isaiah 11, would you go there for a minute? Hallelujah. Here it is, it's prophesied. And there shall come, verse 1, read it with me. And there shall come forth a rod from the stem of Jesse, a branch shall grow out of its roots, and the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. The Spirit of wisdom and understanding, the Spirit of counsel and might, and the Spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. Those are seven attributes that were put on Jesus Christ. But when you get baptized in the Holy Spirit, these seven attributes are now put on you. Amen? Seven attributes of Christ's incarnation as the anointed one and as anointing. 1 John chapter 1. In verse 1. Is everybody there? Let's speak it. That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon and our hands have handled concerning the word of life. The life was manifested and we have seen and bear witness and declare to you that eternal life which was with the Father and was manifested to us. 
that which we have seen and heard, we declare to you that you also may have fellowship with us. And truly our fellowship is with Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. These things we write to you that your joy may be full. This is the message which we have heard from him and declare to you that God is light and in him there is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his words are not in us. The word of life. In the book of Revelation in chapter 12. Hallelujah. In verse 1. Now, there is another sign that God has given us. It's permanent. And it tells the whole story of Jesus Christ. It's called the 12 constellations. Every one of those set of stars proclaims the coming of Christ, the virgin birth, his death, resurrection, and returning as the king. All 12 constellations, the word 12 in the kingdom of God means government. That's why there was 12 apostles. It's the eternal government. Amen. 12 tribes of Israel. So in verse 1, now a great sign ap appeared in verse 1. In heaven, a woman clothed with the sun, with the moon under her feet, and on her head a garland of what? 12 stars. Then being with child, she cried out in labor and in pain to give birth. And another sign appeared in heaven. Behold, a great fiery red dragon having seven heads and ten horns and seven diamonds on his heads. So we know that this is the Antichrist, the fallen Lucifer. His tail drew a third of the stars of heaven, which are angels, and threw them to the earth. Those are now principalities over the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman who was ready to give birth, to devour her child as soon as it was born. She bore a male child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. And her child was caught up to God and his throne. This was all kind of like the summary of everything that was going to happen. She bore a male, uh, and verse 6, Then the woman fled into the wilderness where she has a place prepared by God that they should feed her there 1,260 days, which is three and a half years. Now, again, this is a threefold prophetic event. It, it's a, expressing past, present, and future. So in this, we got, he's explaining everything that's going to happen. Now, we know that we haven't entered that three and a half years yet because that's the first half part of tribulation. He says in verse 7, now he begins to explain to you what happened in heaven. He says, and war broke out in heaven. Michael and the angels fought with the dragon, and the dragon and the angels fought. But they did not prevail, nor was a place found for them in heaven any longer. So the great dragon was cast out, the serpent of old, called the devil and Satan, who deceives the whole world. He was cast to the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Does everybody understand that? So we see that the world has been ruled by Satan's kingdom. Then I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, now salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ has come. That's when Jesus was born in this realm. For the accuser of our brethren who accused them day and night, our God has been, uh, he's been cast down against our God. And they, became, and they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony and they did not love their lives or death. Therefore rejoice, O heavens, and O you who dwell in them. But woe to the inhabitants of the earth and the sea, for the devil has come down to you, having great wrath because he knows he has a short time. Does he know he has a short time right now? Very much. Now, that's why you're seeing everything happening all globally. Now, when a woman... Uh, now, when the dragon saw that he had uh, been cast to the earth, 
he persecuted the woman who gave birth to the male child. But the woman was given two wings of a great eagle that she might fly into the wilderness to her place where she is nourished for times and times and, time and half time were the presence from the presence of the serpent. So that's three and a half years. Now the two, the two wings of an eagle are a representation of the rapture. When Jesus was transfigured on the mount, amen, two individuals showed up, Moses and who? Elijah, right. So both of them showed up. We know that two witnesses are going to come, which will be the same witnesses that showed up, and they will testify everything that's going on in the earth, and then they will be killed. And when they are taken up, so will the body of Christ be taken up. Everybody okay? Hallelujah. Now, verse 15. So the serpent spewed water out of his mouth like a flood after the wo woman, that he might cause her to be carried away by the flood. But the earth helped the woman, and the earth opened its mouth and swallowed up the flood, which the dragon spewed out from his mouth. And the dragon was enraged with the woman and went to make war with the rest of her offspring who keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. Now, you got to remember, after the rapture, there's going to be a lot of people that didn't make it because they weren't right with God. And they're going to realize they didn't make it. And now they were carried the testimony of Jesus Christ. Amen. And they will know, I missed, I missed the rapture. Why? Because there wasn't something right with their life. Something wasn't right. Proclaiming to be Christians. Still living in the world. They might have one foot in the outer court, one foot in the outer darkness. Is everybody okay? Matthew chapter 1. Matthew 1, 18. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was as follow. Let's speak it. After his mother Mary was betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Spirit. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man, and not wanting to make her a public example, was minded to put her away secretly. But while he thought about these things, Behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take to you Mary, your wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. And she will bring forth a son, and you shall call him Jesus. For he will save his people from their sins or from the presence of evil and influence. So all this was done that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the Lord through the prophet, saying, Behold, the virgin shall be with child and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which is translated, God with us. Then Joseph, being aroused from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord commanded him, and took him his wife, and did not know her till she had brought forth the firstborn son. And he is called, his name is Jesus. Philippians chapter 2. Glory. The perfect blemish-free lamb. Philippians 2 and verse 5. Let's speak it together, please. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in a form of God that con did not consider robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, taking a form of a bondservant and coming in the likeness of men. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself, and he became obedient to the point of death, even to the death of the cross. Therefore God also has highly exalted him and given him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow, and of those in heaven, and those on earth, and those under the earth. 
and that every tongue shall confess Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of the Father. Therefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God who works in you both to will and to do his good pleasure. Jesus humbled himself to the death. We're to walk out. When he says work out your salvation, that means deny yourself, pick up the cross, and follow. Deny yourself, pick up the cross, and follow. In Ephesians chapter 1. Deny yourself, cross fight. Pick up the cross and fight. And then you can follow. In verse 3, let's speak it. Ephesians 1, 3. Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing seated in heavenly places in Christ, just as he chose us in himself before the foundation of the world, that we should be what? Holy and without blame before him in love. Sounds like the same thing that he, want. he came with. Blameless, right? Having predestined us to adoption as sons by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will, to pr the praise of the glory of his grace by which he made us accepted in the beloved. In him we have what? Redemption through the, his blood and the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of his grace, which he made known to abound toward us in all wisdom and prudence. Having made known to us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he purposed in himself, that in the dispensation of the fullness of times, he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth in him. Redemption through his blood. In 1 John chapter 3. Hallelujah. In verse 4. First time, John chapter 3, verse 4. Let's speak it together. Whoever commits sin also commits lawlessness. And sin is lawlessness. And you know that he was manifested to take away our sins, and in him there is no sin. In other words, he was manifested to expose the presence of evil. You know that he was manifested to take away our sins, and in him there is no sin. Verse 6, however, or whoever abides in him does not sin. Whoever sins has neither seen him nor known him. Little children, don't let no one deceive you. He who practices righteousness is righteous just as he is righteous. He who sins is of the devil, for the devil sinned from the beginning, and for this purpose the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. He was manifested in the physical to take away the presence of evil. Not just sin, because sin is the presence of evil. Amen? But because the influence of evil, there's desires, passions, deceptions. So Jesus, who came, was truly the mantle of God. He was also known as the sword of the Spirit himself. We'll talk about more of this later. And again, the same mantle that came upon him will come upon anyone who's willing to follow him, deny himself, pick up the cross, and follow. Would you turn for a minute to... Uh, Isaiah 14. Isaiah 14. In verse 12. You know, we read in Revelation 12 how the dragon came against the dragon, the serpent, the devil, came against 
the child of God, the God child, the Savior, the Deliverer, the Healer. And this was said by the Spirit of the Lord through Isaiah. In verse 12, he said, How you have fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning. How you are cut down to the ground, you who weaken the nations. For you have said in your heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will also sit on the mount of the congregation. On the farthest side of the north, I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. And I will be like the most high God. That's why he was removed from God's presence. Of course, I love the Lord's response. He said, yet you shall be brought down to hell, to the lowest depths of the pit. Those who see you will gaze at you and consider you, saying, this is the man who made the earth tremble, who shook kingdoms, who made the world as a wilderness and destroyed the cities, who did not open the house of his prisoners. All kings of the nations, all of them sleep in glory, every one in his house, but you are cast out of your grave like an abominable branch, like a garment of those who are slain thrust through with a sword, who go down to the stones of the pit like a corpse trotting underfoot. You will not be joined with them in burial because you have destroyed your land and slain your people. The brood of evildoers shall never be named. Prepare slaughter for his children because of the iniquity of their fathers, lest they rise up and possess the land and fill the face of the world with their cities. Wow. They haven't taken over everything yet, but they are attempting to. But thank God, we are in a big transition and a turn of things. 2022 will be a totally different time. Totally different time. These words of prophecy will come to pass. The enemy will be put in his place. But there will be chaos. There will be trials. There will be challenges. But again, in the kingdom... It doesn't matter what comes out. Because all things work to the good to those who are right with God. Amen. But out of the kingdom, there'll be much chaos. Much. So we, God is preparing everyone right now. There'll be a prophetic word released for 2020 or 2022. And when he gives it to me, I'll release it. Amen. Praise God. So Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for the reality of the cloth and the manger and, and the pure and holy and blemish-free sacrifice that you send into this world that we could be free, that we could escape, that we could un be anointed and receive the mantle of Christ Jesus and be a warrior in preparation of your return. Lord, seal what's been spoken to us today with reality in the name of Jesus. Prepare our hearts for communion, and you can bring up any ties and offers.